Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer's Desk episode. Today we're taking a closer look at the Sturm Tiger, designed by Dan Siskin. Uh, Dan, this is a, a pretty unique looking vehicle, and uh, I think Brick Mania has actually produced <laughs> more Sturm Tigers than the country of Germany was able to. But yeah, at this point, I think so, yeah, as of today, when the, the, the batch is being done, to basically they're waiting on the mm -hmm. figures. We just got this figure hot off the press. And the ink is still drying, which is a lie, because the ink doesn't ever wet <laughs> <laughs> the way the, our printing process works. But yeah, oh, drop the guy. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's a brand new, brand new kit. Um, we can just go right at, dive right in, I guess. Yeah, so I understand that uh, when you were initially building this design, you went through quite a few different barrel designs before you found one that you really liked. <laughs> yeah, it was a very public thing on, mm -hmm. on Instagram, coming up with different barrel designs, everything from wheels were used. Uh, I ended up with a, with what we have here. It's just using this sort of ball joint piece that, that Lego has. Sure. Um, and we actually printed, let me see if I can get this, printed this tile that shows like a simulated barrel. So that's actually printed. Uh, and it's a really unique weapon because it's actually like a 28 centimeter mortar right. adapted from a Kriegsmarine uh, with the German Navy uh, destroyer depth charge launcher. So oh, it's a rocket launcher from a ship that they said, okay, we're gonna put it in here. Um, up until this point, the, the biggest artillery piece that they had in a vehicle this size would have been a 15 centimeter gun, uh, basically a World War I vintage gun mounted on either a, a, a Panzer III hull or a Panzer IV hull. Mm -hmm. They needed something bigger uh, after, after the siege of uh, Stalingrad. They wanted something a little bit more heavy duty. So they ended up coming up with this sort of a, a gigantic rocket launcher. It's basically a recoilless rifle uh, stuck in the hull of a tank. So Interesting. So it's kind of like, it looks like Almost the chassis of a self-propelled gun, too. Is, is that kind of what they were going for there? Is well, like that's the whole point. They wanted to have mobile artillery that was super heavy armored. They could wheel it into a town and be almost impervious to any sort of infantry weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, and they chose the, you know, this was actually Hitler's idea that we need some super tank, you know, and the, his whole Tiger tank uh, idea, but mm -hmm. taken to the, the, the next degree. So it is based on a Tiger I hull. This is a late war Tiger I hull. Okay. That they, after, after it's, it had been in combat for a while, um, they would be sent back to Germany to be overhauled. And, and uh, 15 of these vehicles, that 15 Tiger tanks that came back from the Eastern Front, actually went back to the Elket factory. They cut off the front half, the glacius of the, the Tiger tank, mm -hmm. and welded this huge casement on here. So it's actually 15 centimeters of armor right there. Wow. Um, so, I mean, that's thick. Yeah, right, no kidding. <laughs> so, uh, it's an armor plate. It's actually fitted over the existing Tiger uh, armor. Uh, they just had to cut it, cut it down to, to fit the, this this huge, uh, you know, basically, basically it's a casement. Do you know if they had to do anything with the engine then to like be able? No, to it's a, it's a, it's a, slower? it's the same. It, this is a late war configuration. So if you if you were looking at like say the Tiger One Thirty One or the, mm -hmm. the Tigers that we've come out recently, the wheel arrangement's different. So they they changed how the the wheels are leaved um, on the later models, and this mm -hmm. is one of them. So. I'll show you both sides. These, uh, this actually are sticker. These are actually stickers on these. Yep. But there is more than just the printed element of the barrel, right? There's a couple more. Oh right, right, yeah. There's, there's, there's the little the vision port here, mm -hmm. um, and then I put in some, some pieces that have appeared in, in previous sets. I think. Uh, oops, dropped the guy again. These, uh, they look like little chocolate chip cookies, but sure. It's, it's the covers for the exhaust, and uh, um, those are printed as well. Of course, you have this full 360 printed oh, yeah. figure, which that uh, figure is awesome. We'll bring yeah. and land into here a little bit. Yeah, more you'll, you'll be able to go into detail on that. I, I don't want to spoil the fun. Very, so. very cool. And then uh, this one's got a pretty uh, accessible and playable interior as well. All right. Well, this this is this is kind of a top tier. Um, the only thing I didn't include, I mean, I kind of went all out of this. It, it, of course, it doesn't move by itself, doesn't have remote control, but uh, <laughs> I didn't put the string for the crane. Uh, every time I see it, you know, I was thinking there'd be like a hook hanging down. I was like, I didn't really want it. this, 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 sure. this cop over company. If you wanted to, you could put the string on here, but almost everything else is functional. So the roof comes off. I mean, this, this hatch is open. This guy was just, the commander was just sitting on top of the ammo racks, but um, roof comes off and inside you actually have yeah. A whole bunch of rockets in there. So I, I loaded the racks up. I think I have 10 in here. The actual Sturm Tiger could hold 12 in the racks and then one on the, the loading tray and one in the actual barrel. So 14 mm -hmm. total could be carried by this thing. Um, and I and I did base this on our most detailed uh, Tiger hull. Let me just pull these sides off so you can see the, the That's ammunition. amazing how easy that comes apart. That's a super playable kit. Right, right. And you can take the whole front off if you want to really see it because you can, you can actually fit guys down in here. Sure. The easiest way to get this thing off is here. You, it does have the spot for the, the driver, the, the co-driver to sit in here. Another good one to uh, include the Tiger crew pack with. Uh, right, this is the, the same, it has a five-man five, five crew in the uh, 
uh, actual vehicle. So you could put the you could put two guys down in there. You could you could actually have guys standing behind them because there is a kind of a position where, where you could be looking out this this viewport. This oh window. sure. And then we do have a uh, machine gun. It's MG34 in the actual tank, but I've used the Brick Arms long um, 30 caliber barrel. Uh, mm -hmm. It is on a it is on a kind of a, a ball mount, but it, it doesn't move all that well. Sure. There's just not much room for it to go. It looks so apart though. Yeah. So it's the same sort of situation, same sort of con connection that my. Uh, um, pan uh, Last Panther head, so they kind of wowed a lot of people. But you do get ten of these shells. They're on two. Sh they're on racks of twos. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> so. That's huge, man. It's as big as the minifig. Right. Well, it is. It's, it's it is. If you see these things in real life, they are as big as a person. Um, does have several opening hatches. So you have the hatch here. The this is this is access hatch to the back of the the casement. Mm -hmm. um, you have the engine compartment, which on my previous Tigers I actually had opening the wrong way. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this one opens the right way. It does have that Maybach engine stuffed way down inside cool. there. Cool. Uh, if you take it, you could take the whole hull, the rest of the hull off if you want. See if I could do it without totally damaging anything. You can see. Oh, there we go. Wow. You can actually see it has the radiators and everything else as well. So this is kind of like in the spirit of, of some of the more fancy, uh, Tiger kits that we've done. It mm -hmm. does have all the, the, fancy interior details. Let me see. Well, and, and kind of one of the more unique vehicles that probably doesn't warrant as many versions as a Tiger tank because it's not quite <laughs> as iconic, but still picking up something like this that's that's the elite level. I mean, that's, that's yeah, a very yeah, this, playable this, this build. Is de this is definitely like a, a top tier Brickmania kit for sure. Mm -hmm. um, we're, you know, we only I only had one chance to do this. I've been putting this this particular vehicle off for a long time because I really wanted to spend the time to to have some fun with it, get it right, do the do the rockets. It is it is quite a unique vehicle. So uh, being able to do this was kind of a a long-term uh, goal. Well, and was the was the barrel kind of the final thing to, to <laughs> conquer before you could get to a position where you felt like you you had the kit you wanted to see? Well, I mean, I, I, the, nothing nothing on this barrel is particularly new. There are some brick arms elements in it, um, but it was still it was like the sort of like you know this is this is the one feature of this vehicle is this gigantic gun. Mm -hmm. So I had to make sure that it was done correctly. Sure. So put that well, I'd say on. the design looks awesome. It comes together cool. Oh, yeah. The fact that you can fit those figures down in there, yeah, even with that, that extra is. large commander's hat, you can still put the glasses on. So the, the front of the the front of the casement. Um, yeah, there's there's the engines down in there. Uh, the real, like I said, the real vehicle could hold 14 rockets. Mine mm -hmm. only hold 12, so well, <laughs> 10 actually, because you can't put anything inside this right. this, this actual barrel. And that's okay. I'd say for Lego, that's pretty good transitional stats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, we're trying to be as as detailed and, and realist, true to life as possible. Mm -hmm. so, so you can put that back together. It's a little. Get that commander out of there. His hat is blocking <laughs> the glasses from coming back all the way. But if you push the guy back in his seat, I should be able to get that to close up, right? Crew guy sitting up there wouldn't have as big a fancy hat anyway. No, 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 for sure. <laughs> close up all the hatches. Oops, I think we have to do this in the right order. And there you have the Sturmtiger all sealed up. Wow, very Ready for very battle. Cool. Yeah. Any additional play features on this thing you want to go over? Uh, well, it rolls pretty well. <laughs> not, not so much on the smooth uh, this table drop. Yeah, right. Put it on carpet. Yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. still doing fine. It does have it does have semi-functional, you know, the usual semi-functional suspension. suspension. Yeah. So that's it. Very. That very is cool. the Sturm Tiger, and Lando will talk about the figure. Yeah, one of the highlights of this kit, obviously, is the awesome figure it comes with. So let's transition over to Landon and take a little closer look at that. That's right. Uh, here is the Sturm Tiger Commander. Um, kind of a special one for this kit. Uh, super late war. Um, there weren't obviously a whole lot of these made, so there's a bit of artistic liberties going on here. Sure. This is, this is um, uh, kind of an interesting uniform loadout here. Actually, if you remember the uh, mouse kit from a couple of years back, this is this is almost like a, a revamp of that uh, same minifigure, kind of updated to our 2020 Ooh. standards. Uh, new camouflage pattern that I'm debuting here on those uh, trousers. Uh, and that would be the swamp camo is what we would refer to that, or um, Stumpftarnmuster, I believe, in German. Glad, um, you, glad you know how to say it. Maybe I might have slaughtered that. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's it's a cool pattern actually. Um, so uh, more common would probably be something like Splinter for earlier on in the war. Mm -hmm. This is actually just sort of the evolution of that camo pattern. Um, They've, take, they've gotten rid of a lot of the sharp edges in uh, splinter camo mm -hmm. uh, and then have that nice, more diffuse blotches. Um, really actually up close, very beautiful camouflage pattern. Uh, and you can see some of those similar um, gradient techniques actually used in modern day camo. 
Uh, Multicam actually has uh, some very similar gradients inside of it. So that was interesting to see sort of um, World War II stuff reappear uh, even in modern era. Yeah, so, what a connection. That's yeah, really, cool. really awesome seeing that. Um, another interesting detail about this camo is that there's these sort of simulated raindrops or whatever they're supposed to be. That was actually, the, the screen for that was lifted right off of the original, um, from what I could tell, lifted right off the original splinter camo. So they're actually kind of reusing old assets um, in creating new camouflage patterns, which you see that a lot, especially towards the end of the war. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, moving up, so he's got these suspenders. Um, these trousers would have been reversible, so in the winter they would have had the white side mm -hmm. um, facing outwards. Uh, the suspender straps, sometimes they just came in just straight white. Um, he's also wearing a uh, this black panzer wrap, which probably wouldn't be super common uh, towards the end of the war. Um, so maybe this is, he would have had the full uh, outfit. Um, for the, in this uh, swamp camo, so maybe that's just um, underneath of his. It uh, kind of makes for a stylish combination. Yeah, I though, to be totally it. honest, yeah, yeah. like it, it looks, it looks good. Yep. Um, brand new artwork debuting for the uh, throat mic and headphone um, cords on the torso there, and that connects up um, it, it, to these, this awesome three D printed. Uh, a crusher cap here uh, with those new headphones. So this is this is the first time we're uh, I think debuting. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so that's cool to see that. Uh, really cool. Uh, made in house, printed in house. Um, really awesome. It's just that next level detail yeah. that like especially when you're going military specific. Like you just you can't beat that. Absolutely. It's perfect. Uh, and then eye patch kind of. Uh, Throwback to that mouse commander again. Late war, as you said, you know, Very been late through war. some stuff. Like, there's, we're not fresh. We're not green yeah. anymore. If you go earlier in the war, this the same face will appear mm -hmm. in some of our kits, but without the eye patch. So. <gasps> See, there's battle a story damage, there. Battle damage. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's got like you know the the, the earphones on, and then mm -hmm. uh, you know eye patch. Dan was commenting that he'd be sort of like, what what would you say? Yeah, like, he's an artillery commander. Yeah. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, so this is, I mean, one of the more fun figures that I've made in a while, so I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I did to make it, so thanks. Yeah, very, very cool. So there you have it. That's the Designer's Desk episode for the Sturm Tiger. Uh, make sure to leave a comment, let us know what you think about that kit. Otherwise, tune in next time.